the songwriter say, I have many tears and sorrows. Is somebody hearing me here? So I have many tears and sorrows. I have caution for tomorrow. But it's something that interests me in that song. Somebody says, to it all, I learn how to trust to depend on you. My trials come only to make me strong. Is there anybody hearing me here? Your trials come to test you. Every man, woman on the side of my voice in life, there will be trials. My trials come only to make me strong. If you don't have a trial, there's no way you can be strong. Somebody shout hallelujah. That song gave me a blessing. Amen. Amen. He said, but in every situation, God gave me blessed consolation. Because my trial come to make me strong. If you never have a trial, go and I see the strength that you have. Is somebody hearing me here? <laughs> go test your strength by the trials you go through. Has anybody here been through some trials in your life and you try to give up, but they stay, you are still standing? Do it all. Chew it all. I trust in God. I trust in God. Somebody sing that song with me. Chew it all. Why are you quiet? Chew it all. I trust in God. Do it all. Do it all. Do it all. Do it all. I to trust in Jesus. Somebody help me. I learned to trust in God. Do it all. Thank you, Jesus. Do it all. I don't know this song. Uh, the reason you don't know it because you haven't gone through something. But when you go through something, you will know that through it all, you will learn how to depend on Jesus. Somebody help me. Through it all. My God. Through it all. Father, we thank you for your blessings. Give you glory and honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, we we'll bless your name. Amen. I just wanted to take the time to celebrate the woman that I ever loved in my life. Bless you. Amen. You know, I got one daughter that God gave me. She can chastise me. Treasure, she's a chastise me, daughter. Treasure. She is so much full of herself. <laughs> she came last night. She said, Daddy, long time I haven't heard you saying on the puppet that you love mommy. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I said, okay, church, I will see you tomorrow, okay? <laughs> Help me bless and celebrate the woman of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God is about to bless somebody very powerful. Amen. God is about to bless somebody very powerful. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Mm. Matthew says 33. We're going to read the scriptures and I'll announce my team and then we'll preach to you and we'll bless you and you go to make disciples. Amen. Amen. 
And I just love the way I spoke to the early morning people this morning. It was very powerful. We're going to start with discipleship classes, 10 o'clock every Sunday. Jesus said in Matthew 28, go and make disciples. Go and make disciples. Amen? Amen. Through the disciple classes, you will learn the bylaw and constitution to this ministry. You will also learn the vision and mission statement from the ministry. You will also know all about it. It's about time because we're about to go forward. Amen. Amen. We know that in Jesus' mighty name. So please make it your duty to be here on time, especially 10 o'clock for our discipleship classes. It will help us. There are a lot of things we did not do from the beginning. No problem. Never late than never. Amen. We're going to stay, so we're going to kick off in a very special way. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Matthew 6, 33. Let me start from verse 30. Because I, if I don't find what I'm looking for, then I will continue reading. Let's see Matthew 6. Let's start from verse 30. Go to 39, I mean 29, 29, 28. I love to do that, huh? Twenty seven, twenty six. All right, I think twenty six got what I'm looking for. Go to twenty five. Twenty four. Right, that's what I want to see. Amen. I want us to read that very quickly. One, two, three, go. No one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other. Or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. Twenty-five. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or body, or what you will put on. It's more. Listen, I want to go back to that. It's not life more than food and drink and more than clothing. Is life not more better? Other translations say, let's see from the NL. And I see the passage of scriptures that we just read. While we are looking at it, can you pray with me? Hallelujah. Amen. Let's see it again. One, two, three, go. That is not what I tell you. Do not worry about everyday life. Whether what you have in food or drink. Or enough clothes to wear. It is life more than food, and your body is more better than clothes. Amen. Let's see it from the good news, then we'll close. Good news says something. The same voice. Let's look at from the good news. Thank you, good news. Let's read together. One, two, three, go. Mm. My God. 25. <laughs> this is why I tell you. Do not worry about the food and drink we need. After all, is life now worth more than food? Stop right there. Is it life now worth more than clothes, food, and all these things that you try to get? Go straight to 33. Straight to 33. Go to 33. Go to 33. 33. And still be concerned above all else with the kingdom of God. And what is required of you, he will provide you with all these other things. Ah. 
your concern should be about the kingdom of God, the things of God. After your concern is about the things of God, then now, he will supply you with all these things that you are concerned. But the key verse that I want to concentrate on this after or this morning, the key verse I want to concentrate on is, is it life now more better than this thing? I want to minister to you briefly on the theme here that I captured by the grace of God. Life is not cheap. Amen. Take your seat. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, life is not cheap. Life is not cheap. Wherever you're watching from this great time, I want to announce to you, brothers and sisters, this morning, this afternoon, wherever you are, this, please pay as close attention because this will help you. Life is not cheap. Cheap. Look at your neighbor. Say it with attitude. Say life is not cheap. It's not cheap. Thank for your obedience. Life, go to Eddie, is not cheap. In Jesus' mighty name. Life is not cheap. I want to ask you a question this morning. What is the most important thing in your life? Again, what is the most important thing in your life? I want somebody to say it loud. What is the most important thing in your life? Jesus. Who said life? Who said life? That's the answer. The most important thing in your life is life. <laughs> God already in your life. So the most important thing in every man's life is your life. When you lose your life, you lose everything. But there are a lot of people who got birth, brain, they don't think right. Our brain like a bird, brain. So we don't think right. There are some people that can kill bread. Amen, somebody. The most important thing in your life is what? Your life. Life is more, Jesus said, why are you worried about what you will eat, what you will wear, what you, is your life not more important than this thing? Goshenized, founder of God, I came to let you know that your life is pressure. Your life is important. Your life is more beneficial than any other thing. Your life, let me tell you something. Come on, look at me, please. Pay attention to me. Don't be distracted. Your life is priceless. Amen. Ah, may God help us this evening. Amen. Your life is what? Priceless. No one can pay for life. There is no amount of money on earth that worth life. Nobody hearing me here. There is no amount of money on earth that can pay for life. No one have, have ever in their life stole money. And say, if I die, let the money pay for my life to come back. Somebody shout hallelujah. Life is the most expensive thing that no one can afford. Amen. You can't afford life. It's so expensive. It's what, it's what God gave you this life. That is very, 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 very expensive. When you lose that life, nothing can give it back to you. Nothing. All your property, there will be some niggas who will use it and use it. They got niggas standing by to use your property, to use your money in the bank. That's why I don't let life insurance because insurance simply means when re insurance means replacement. That's the meaning of insurance. Replacement, right? 
If you got an insurance, your, insure your car. Your car get damaged, whatever wrong with your car, the insurance, they have to pay for it, including your house. But your life damage, they can't give you a bike. When you come to them, they tell you, say, listen, insure your life. Hi. So something happened to me. Who's going to get the insurance money? Your family. Your wife, your children. Your husband as well, too. <laughs> Amen. So life is priceless, y'all. Come on, somebody hearing me yet? Amen. There are many of us who don't know the value of life. We are misusing the life. Let a message sink in you today that when you leave from here, your mentality will change. You will take life very important. Life is not cheap. Life is very expensive. Hallelujah. You can't pay for it. When it is gone, when it is gone, when it is gone, it's gone. Your money can't pay for it. Your houses and land can't pay for it. As a matter of fact, there are people trying to even pray for you to lose your life so they can take your shoe. So they can take your house and take your money. They pray every day. I watched an African friend and the guy was praying for a father. He said, Daddy, when will you die now? Because I won't take all these things that you have. When will you die? Amen. Life is very important. Jesus said, he said, seek you first. Don't worry about clothes, money, houses, car, everything. Because all of these things are is good, but they are vanity. They are very good. They are vanity. Do you know what they call ownership? Many don't know what it's called ownership. The meaning of ownership means something that you own forever. You own it. But can I, can, I, can I say something to you? Your houses and your car and your clothes, you don't own them forever. They are borrowed to you. Because the moment you pass away, they're going to donate them. Donate, donate. <laughs> they will donate your clothes to the, to the thrift store and, and all they can. They will donate them to goodwill. It's not yours. What you have that God gave you is the life that you for you to maintain. Somebody shout hallelujah. How are you maintaining the precious gift that is priceless that God has given you? Let me ask you the question. How are you maintaining it? Are you living a useless life? Are you living a life that has no meaning, no description? How are you taking care of this life that God gave you? The precious life that God never spoke. To me, after God spoke to me, every other, let there be light, let there be tree, let there be animal. When it came to this life, he never spoke. He breathed it. What was in him? That's why he put, he, my good, nobody hear what I'm saying. Somebody shout hallelujah. Life was so precious that God could not get it from anywhere else except from in himself. Oh my goodness. Nobody hearing me yet. Somebody shout hallelujah. But Eddie, God could not get life from anywhere to give you. To show how value is this life is. He took the mud from the ground. He took the clay from the ground to make your flesh. But when it came to life, God couldn't find life anywhere else. All of us shall. Nowhere else he could find life unless within himself. Life was nowhere around. And the Bible said, and God breathed into man the life, the sweat life. And man became a living soul. God took himself and put himself inside of you. How are you taking care of this pressure, this glorious, this best life, this good life, this pressure life that God, how are you maintaining? How are you taking care of this life? With this life, this life, this life, what this guy said. Someone else share hallelujah. How are you taking care of this life? If you know the importance of life, you won't joke with life. When you know the importance of who gave you the life, you won't joke with the person who gave you the life. Somebody shout sure, hallelujah. Uh, nobody hearing me here. Somebody shout sure, hallelujah. Somebody shout sure, hallelujah. It's very pressure. Look at your neighbor say it's pressure. Say it's pressure. Mm. Life is so pressure. 
that God could not find life anywhere to give you. But God have to take the life from in him. Oh, my God, my God. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Say, thank you, Jesus. 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 Mm, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Mm. Mm. When I think about life, it's so precious. Mm. Oh, may God help us. Mm, 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 mm. Somebody share hallelujah. hallelujah. It's so important. Life is so important. Life is so important. There are many people who who live in this life carelessly. Something that God could not find anywhere else. He spoke, let there be Jepensi, Jepensi came out. Let there be monkey. Monkey came out. So no man can resemble monkey. You're not monkey. Men did not come from monkey. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. God said his word, let us make men to look like us. Let love make me to. Now, if make him look like us, they have nothing to care about our lives. Men are not supposed to die because God don't die. God took what was in him and gave it to you. It was a misuse of it that God suspended life for a while. But life, God gave it to you. Very important. Listen to me. <laughs> Look at Matthew chapter 10 quickly. Matthew 10. Are we there? Verse 28. 25 to 28. Life. I'm going to give you this thing today. And you will go home thinking. If you meet a man in a hospital that is dying on his dying bed. And the doctor asks him, how much can you pay to live for tomorrow? He will tell you all his property tickets just for him to live for one day. You can't afford to even pay for one day to live. If it was, if it was to pay rent for your life, then you're not alive. <laughs> oh, Lord, help us. It is enough to, for the disciple that he liked his teachers. And a servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house, Bishibu, how much more will they call those who he is house? That's the time they call Jesus Bishibu. They call him. Amen. Let's look at Let's keep going. Something. Something. Verse, verse number 26. Hurry up now. Let us read together. One, two, three, go. Therefore, do not fear them, for there are nothing covered that will not be revealed. And hidden that will not be knowing. This one for the Jesus. You think nobody watching you? All right? All right? Are you with me? There's nothing in healing that will not be revealed. So all the hard thing you're doing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All the test messages. Sheraton Hotel, room number 308. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen, somebody. There's something in secret that will not be revealed. When God say it, he mean it. Don't tell nobody. Don't tell it between me and you. Don't tell nobody. You lie. Nothing between two persons is a secret. The only secret I ever know that the one you know for yourself. Somebody say hallelujah. Am I preaching to somebody? If I'm preaching, good shot, amen. 
Therefore, do not fear. Jesus said, don't fear them. They go in Bathsheba and were trying to kill them. And Jesus said something. He said, do not fear them. For there is nothing covered that will not be revealed. Look at verse 27. Quickly, let me make my case. 27, the verse 27. Let's go. Everybody read together with me. Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. And what you hear in your ears, preach on the house top. Okay, that's deep. 28. 28. Look at 28. I want everybody to read together at the count of three. One, two, three, go. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. But rather fear him who is able to destroy both the soul and the body to hell. This is life. Don't be afraid of me. Jesus said, your life is more important. So be afraid of the man who can both destroy your soul and your life and send you to hell and your body to hell. Yes. Life is not cheap. Look at your neighbor and say, life, life. is not, not cheap. Don't get it cheap. God spoke. Let there be life. No. He breathed life into me. He spoke, let there be life. But when it came to life, he said, let, let me put what in me into a man. <clears throat> Amen? Amen? So I want, I want to address a case here so we can be out of, out of this place. He said, now, nah, watch this. Life is not cheap. So God gave us this precious life. Did you pay for it? No. Answer me. Did you pay for the life? No. You didn't pay for it because why? You couldn't afford it. The money, the budget for the whole world put together can pay for your life. Amen. There are people who even they put battery in them. They will say that. A battery will not last forever. People got battery on in their heart. They're not going to last. Life is not going to last. Amen. It's very expensive. You can't pay for it. That's the reason why no one could pay for life. Do you know what can pay for life? I want to see the smart people here. What can pay for life? Everybody smart. What can pay for life? Eh? Why are you getting all the things? Who knows life can pay for life? Oh, that's deep. Okay, I will not go there. Y'all keep thinking. Who knows life can pay for life? Do you know why you're going to live forever? Because somebody paid for, for, for life with their life. The cross of Calvary. Somebody die that you can live. No money could pay. That's the reason why you should be appreciative to the one who died on the cross for your life. Because you were condemned going to hell. Somebody came and sacrificed. Because nothing could pay for life except for life. <laughs> somebody hearing me here now. Is somebody hearing me here? Only life could pay for life. There's nothing in heaven or earth that could pay for life except for blood. Oh, God help us. I want to ask us this evening. I want you to think about this life. Precious life. The doctor will tell you, say, we did everything in our power, but we couldn't save them. Because you don't have the ability to save life. You can't pay for life. So if you can't pay for life, don't destroy life. Amen, somebody. Amen. Why do you want to destroy what you can't afford? There are people that are destroying life. They can't afford it. They kill each other. They pressing each other. They lie on each other. They damage each other. They know they can't afford to pay for this life. Think about it. What can you give back to the person who gave you this life? Why he required of us? I want you to take the Listen to me. There's nothing God won't buy from us for this life except for one thing. And that's the thing we're not doing. I studied the thing. I prayed about it. And God continued to reveal the same thing. What can you give in return 
to God. What can you give him by for the life he gave you? He only requires one thing of you. And that's what we take for granted. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. That's what he requires of you. And listen, whatever that will benefit you, Satan is against you. Whatever that will help you, Satan is against you. So he said, don't fight it because he don't want you to discover what you can give back to God. God don't need your money. The money is for on earth, for the kingdom to advance and for you to bless you. He don't need it. He have everything. Somebody shout hallelujah. But what can we give back to God for the precious life that God has given us? And nothing can replace. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. I want you to say very attentive. What can be given by to God. Exodus chapter 8. Exodus chapter 8 verse 1. I want to show you what God required of you. Verse 1. Let us read together. Everybody read. One, two, three, go. And the Lord spoke to Moses. Spoke, who spoke to Moses? Go to Pharaoh and say to him, Thus said the Lord, Let my people go that they may serve me. All God wants from you is for you to serve him. It looks so simple, but it's so powerful. The reason I give you this precious life is for you to serve me. How many people do we know? <laughs> Pastor Kofa, I have discovered in order for me to continue this life and to serve God. It sounds some kind of way to people. And what I'm saying now is hurting the devil because the devil's secret has been re revealed. It hurting the devil because it is a secret that a lot of people don't know. What can I give you a change of the precious gift that I can't pay for? God said, I know you can't pay for it, but serve me. Listen to me. Nothing you ever, a wise servant of God, nothing should ever stand before your service with God. Now your job is good to work. Now, woman, not men, not nothing, because this is what God requires. Exodus chapter 5, verse 1, go and serve me. Exodus chapter 7, go and serve me. Exodus chapter 8, go and serve me. Exodus chapter 9, go and serve me. God kept on repeating. Every time Pharaoh, I mean Moses, appeared to Pharaoh, just one thing. He never changed the confession before Pharaoh. He continued to repeat the same thing. God said, let my people go that they may serve me. God said, let my people go that they may serve me. God takes service very important and we take it very carelessly. If you let anything stand before God, he remove it. Because he is a jealous God. You can't serve him and sell money. My, how do you sell money? When you take the job that giving you money above God. He didn't say don't work. But don't take it above God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Don't ever. This is a mistake we made. And God wants me to tell you today. So you can discover this thing. Somebody say discover. And recover. It is discovering that brings recovery. Make your mind in your life. Never in your life play with service. He stood before Pharaoh. Let my people go. That it may serve me. Not no reason. Yeah, it is. Amen, somebody. That it may serve me. Look at Job 36, 11. Job 36, verse 11. Job 36, verse 11. Go there quickly. Job 36, verse 11. Media is going to be swift. Mm. Let's read together. One, two, three. Go everybody read. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their year in pleasure. The reason you're not spending your years in pleasure and you're not experiencing prosperity because the first thing that brings prosperity and pleasure is service. You can't jump over obedience and serve. Then you get prosperity. This is so serious. This is so straight. This is what God requires to continue living and enjoy this life. It's your service to God. Ah, nobody hearing me? Let the message provoke somebody today and make it in your mind that nothing will stand before my service. Somebody shout hallelujah. Service! When you discover that, you discover life. 
Amen? Amen. When you discover that, you discover what? <clears throat> God, listen, let me tell you something. God don't allow anything Pastor Kova to stand before his service. He get angry. Why anger God? Jesus said, seek you first the kingdom. Life is more important, but go, come to church. Some of you say, hold on. Somebody say, hold on. Hold on. All right. Amen? Amen. Nothing should stand before your service with God. Nothing absolutely nothing. Somebody say nothing. nothing. Say nothing. nothing. The pressure life he gave you. This pressure, press life. This pressure, press life. This pressure, press life. Life that he couldn't get from anywhere to give you until he, he took it from himself and gave it to you. It's press life. Why he require bite from us? His service. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity. This is what God saying. You can't break the word. This is a secret people have not discovered. They let the devil to take them from place to place and make them unstable. You can't stand before God with service. Though. He told Moses, he said, Moses, Go to Pharaoh and let Israel go. Because the Hebrew called it Israelites. Israel, my son Israel. Let Israel go that Israel may serve me. Amen, somebody. Let Israel go that Israel may serve me. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. But I know that your son that coming, you should put a melon in Israel. Put king all kind of name, but the melon should be Israel. I mean, service. I'm serious. I'm saying that. It will come to pass. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Put his maiden in Israel. Don't, don't forget the message. You should copy and play over and over here. Because yeah? sometimes we're going to forget. Especially when we marry a beautiful woman, we're going to forget. <laughs> Amen, somebody. That it may serve me. See, Exodus chapter 4. Let me just say, Exodus chapter 4, verse 23. Rabo Kaloma Kuka Rabashanta. Esther 23. Let's see. Everybody see with me. One, two, three, go. Read with me. One, two, three, go. So I said to you, let my son go that he may serve me. But if you refuse to let him go, indeed I will kill your son, your firstborn. <laughs> That's God. So he's trying to tell you, he said, if anything has stopped you from serving me, I will kill it. That's the reason why many people say, I lost my job, I lost my heart. Why? Because you took it over service. Oh my, oh my goodness. I don't know who I'm talking to. I heard many people say, I just lost my job, I just lost my house, I just lost my. Why? Because you put those things fresh before God. So God take it, God kill it. Oh my God. If nothing got to you, this will get to you. God killed it, God took it because why? You, 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 you allowed to stand before service. It's good to have it, but don't let it stand before your service. He will also enjoy it, but let it not be us to worship these things. Amen. A girl coming from Philadelphia called Nancy Koruba, and she said, Prophet, I just lost my house. Before I lost my house, my husband walked away. And I couldn't afford paying the market by myself. So I lost a house. And I asked her, I said, Sister Nancy, when last you were in church? Oh, no, the job can't allow me. They ain't give me Sunday off. They ain't give me no day off. Uh, or more a year plus, I didn't go to church. Before she got married, she was on the altar. God, if you give me a husband, I will save you all the days of my life. I will save you, God. If you, if you allow me to go to America, I will save you all the days of my life. If you get the bridge, Lord, I will not, I will not stay out of yourself. People quit to forget. They don't know what is ahead of them. Ah, my goodness. If you're not careful, you don't know. Just because you got one prayer answer don't mean that there's no other prayer request. There are a lot of them ahead of you. There are a lot of obstacles. There are a lot of obstacles. There are a lot of things ahead of you. So God wants to continue to serve him. Long things should take the place of seven. Somebody had a seven. That's what God requires. I tell God, if they are missed church, that means I'm on my way. Again, I'm drunk, I'm into, you know how people can be addicted to drugs? I'm addicted to service. That's why I don't sleep at night. 
That's my job. I'm drunk. Breaking demon legs, busting their heart, killing them. Men, they hear my wife. I don't, I don't, when I pray for you, I send text behind it. I pray for you. Don't think I'm sending text. I mean, at the time I'm praying. After the prayer, before I take this, I'm carrying some demon on your behalf. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yes! I began my daughter coming from his son. She said, I went to the doctor, and the, and, and, and the doctor told me, say, I'm going to have a child with you and no more. I said, the doctor made a mistake. Her sister, I began. She couldn't tell. I'm speaking. God said, I'm going to give the testimony because his testimony may to overcome. So every time I give testimony, he said, we are overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the words of a testimony. Hallelujah. She said, they can't see the kingdom. They can't see that. They can't see that. I said, why now? Then I want to pray. And the Lord said, the enemy want to cause her to lose everything in her life by giving that child to hospital every day. So the child will be born malfunction. Then she have to be going to hospital. Every time, every time different hospital. The enemy want to suffer her. That's why they place that thing on the child. God revealed it to me right away. And I said to her, when are you supposed to see the doctor, Abigail? She said, Friday. I said, I'm going to fast for you. When I'm fasting for the other people, I will, I will fast for you. I will stay in the girl. Because the Bible says, Esau stood in the girl and fasted for the Jew. So it's my duty to fast for you, to pray for you. If you don't make connected, I saw you pray. I said, before you go to the hospital, please call me, Abigail. I was waiting for a call, so I didn't sleep. I said, your family is so precious to me. I was waiting, like all of you. Somebody said, hallelujah. I said, call me. So when I glad she didn't call. Hey, she didn't call. I said, oh, I hope this girl should not go to the hospital with all calling me God. She didn't call. So I almost called her sister. I said, tell your sister to call me. By the time I pick up the phone to call her sister, I saw the number coming in. She said, Papa, I'm about, to, I'm about to go to the hospital. And I said, when you get there, the news will change. Amen. Nobody hearing me. The news will change. She went there Friday. When she came by, I said, call me Fred. Don't call nobody again. I want to hear the news first. Somebody shout hallelujah. I said, Abigail, don't call nobody. Don't call mama. Don't call me first. Because I know it's a good news, as I said. And she called me. She said, the next daughter said, the other daughter made a mistake. Nobody hear what I'm saying. Somebody shout hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? Look at your neighbor and say, thank God for the prophet. You're not saying it right. Look at your neighbor and say, thank God. For a prophet, thank God. For a prophet, thank God. For a prophet, thank God. Don't thank me. Thank the Lord for sending me. I could have said be drinking fifty fifty and drinking beer, but God arrested me at the age of twenty one. Twenty one? What I did? I do nothing. God, twenty one. What you say? See ya. See that? All my friends left me, except for one, Tanu. He knew Tanu. He met Tanu. He and Tanu wrote. Tanu gave the testimony. All our friends were like almost 11 in one room. 11. Some slept on the bed. Some slept on the bed. Some slept on the bed. We were like 11. We were changing clothes. Bad boys. We were getting a test in Amos and go to the club. And we'll run. We can't pay. Coming back, getting the same test in cap. Find another test in cap. One person will be getting out after another. We'll reach to the area. You get down. The other person get down. And they tell him the drawer say the last man will pay. <laughs> when the last man know that he closer at the house, because he don't want the test drawer to remember the house. <laughs> two minutes to walk the house. He will say, Yeah, I'm stopping here. And the and that driver dare not leave his car to run behind one man. Because as you run in, criminal coming to take the battery, to take the tire, to take everything. So we will run from the testing. One time we're running. I'm running from the testing. He got out from the car. He won't run. He look at the car. He slap the car. Pop! He said, look at these bastards. I said, okay, no problem. <laughs> in so cannot re 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 refuse our results. Somebody say amen. So I will buy. So imagine, and then Mira, the time you started enjoying, the time God said stop. 21. Praise God for Jesus. <laughs> I don't know, sir, the record is there. 21, no, 21. It's not 21, you are Bible. 21. <laughs> 21. 21. Yesterday, we were in a, in, 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 in a youth class. I was telling them, 21. 21 years old. The Lord arrested me. Amen. And all oh, my friends. Left me. 
They said to me, you the one saw God. <laughs> they didn't see him. <laughs> you saw God. Until we can see him. <laughs> I told him, gentlemen, Jesus appeared to me. He said, oh yeah, that you, he appeared to him. He appeared to us. <laughs> they couldn't be convinced. Can I tell you, every one of them, I preached their funeral. Every one of them died. Except for Tanu Stastony. Tanu was about to die in the Ebola camp when the Lord used me to pray over water and give it to him Hallelujah. for him to recover. Hallelujah. He said, Una friend, he died. You can't be having a product that bringing you profit and you destroy it. Every prof product that don't make profit, you don't keep it on your shelf. Are you understand what I'm saying? Will you want to do a business that don't give you profit and giving you losses? That's how many people, they like God gave them. They are not making the other profit. God is losing. That's what Jesus said. I came to save. To seek to save what? That which was lost. Because many of you, you don't know the importance, the value of your life. So you put your life in the mud. You will allow me to stop you from coming to church. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Don't let nothing, brother Eddie, nothing under the sun stand before you. God said, he said, I will kill your firstborn. It's, it's, this is the Lord saying. He said, and so I say to you, let my son go that he may what? Serve me. But if you refuse to let him go, indeed, I will kill your son. Your firstborn, I will kill him. And God, when God says something, he means it. Can God lie? No. Give me Exodus 12, verse 12. Let me give you confirmation of that verse. Exodus 12, verse 12. Exodus 12, verse 12. See that. Can we read together? Everybody read with me. One, two. When God says Exodus chapter 4, verse, verse, the verse that you just read, yes, the confirmation of what he said. He said, I will kill your first bone. Now see the confirmation of that verse. Let's read verse 12. 12, 12. One, two, three, go. Everybody read. For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and beasts, and all against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. He told you that he would do it. So, but I lost my job. Yeah, you lost your job because you take your job before God. I'm not talking to you. I'm just saying something. It's in general. I know you lost your job. But, you know. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, you took your job. God said, no, no, no. no don't take it. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I knew a couple. I knew a couple that went to Ghana as a refugee. They went to Ghana. I met them on a camp, on a refugee camp. This guy was so zealous for God. But he was so obstacle. Hey, we have a complete obstacle. I know the family they are on loud. They want to call in the guy at church right now in Philadelphia. The web was a complete obstacle. The guy loved church. Oh, we will be beating your face in the morning. He will get up to go to church on time. Everything serving God. And sometimes when he comes from church, he will be grieving. He in the church, he will not there. When he go, he say, honey, why you didn't come? Well, I was making oil, and I know it was late already, so I yet decided to stay because it's already late. <laughs> Couple of times he did it, and the guy was grieving. Conference, there go, let me show my wife. She won't come. As a matter of fact, the guy said, sometime when he leaving, that's the time her friend, her club, because she was in the club. Her club friend, oh, sweetie, we got a club meeting today. Club meeting, no day, but on Sunday. We got crazy at the devil bar. And the man going to church, he going to club meeting. So he went on his knee to pray. He didn't know what he was praying for. Father, go whatever that's stopping me from serving, he could take it away. Your wife got sick. He prayed that prayer, not to say, I was on the camp. He said, Lord, whatever that will stand before me from serving you, take it away. You know, God don't play with service. He said, I will kill your firstborn. If you stop from letting go to serve me, somebody shout hallelujah. Her wife God said she was in a hospital on life support. When the angel appeared to him in a dream, he said, you told me to take away what will stop you from serving me. Your wife is a hindrance. I am about to take off. Started crying to God. 
But you told me to do this thing. She's a heathen. He went to the hospital while she was on life support, but she could, her eye was open and start praying. She could understand something. Started praying for her. He said, Mama, you are dying because of me. Maka stood, Maka stood against David from worshiping and serving his God. She became barren in her life. She never had a child. Don't never let anything, Mama Grace, stand before you on your serving God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Don't let nothing. I'm warning you, church. Don't let nothing. The reason why you are losing things because you put things above God. Somebody shout hallelujah. You put things before God. The job that you have, he's given to you. The things that you have, he's given to you. Nothing that you own that God did not give you. Don't put things before God. I have seen people in the church get an application for a good job. Because they added Sunday, they refuse that job. They come in and say, because it's Sunday, I refuse it. God wants to see how much you love him. Why are you willing to sacrifice to serve him than the life that you I don't know who I'm pushing to tonight, but I'm giving you something. He wouldn't to see why you wouldn't sacrifice to give him. He prayed for his wife. When some pastors went there, Pastor David went to go pray. Pastor George went to go pray. We all went to go pray for the woman. And then what happened? The next thing, you know what happened? The Bible says, the Bible says, when he had prayed, she was upon the death. He prayed the prayer of Hezekiah. Lord, remember how I said, please spare my wife. And it's true story. Pray that prayer. Amen, Amen somebody. God is out of have mercy on her. When she came from the sick bed, she was the one, she would put a makeup in the bed and go to church and still make up, but say she was in church. She became very faithful. After she knew that it was because of that, she got confirmation from pastors. She confessed, she said, yeah, my husband is more faithful than me. I thought that women would be more faithful than men, but in the case, it was a man. So they got some kind of business. They were doing one, some kind of business. The business started to broom. People came from Accra everywhere. They were buying their African clothes and stuff. Selling. So they had a shop. The shop was doing well. Now the both of them come in mind the money. And slow down go. They started going to church. The pastor called them. Pastor Joy called them and said, What wow, uh, Chief, what happened? You slow in church. This time people got to wait for you and all for prayer. What happened? Why are you slow down? He said, Pastor, you know, if I don't wait, I will not pay the tire. They don't want me to pay. You know, Pastor, you know, I got to pay my tire. You know, I got to take care of this. And all. He, started, he started giving excuses. The pastor told him, remember your prayer. Whatever that was stand before you from serving God, God will take it away. The business started going down. This is what he did. He went to God. He prayed. He said, God, what should I do? I got to pay my family. No, let me make a covenant. Give me my time, and I will give you your time. Nobody hear what I'm saying. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's why God is a just God. Everyone will you be in my service. And when that time comes to close that shop, you better don't pass one minute. They make a covenant. They sign, he signed a covenant. Put it in the bow and brought it on the altar. He said, I will close my shop. Five o'clock, St. Church, start six. I will close five minutes from the church. So they told his house, so he business place. He made the, they came on an agreement. That's called covenant. They make a covenant. Do you know what Jesus said? He picked a point. Who faced? He said, gave Caesar what is Caesar? Give God what is God. But many of us, we're giving Caesar. We're not giving God. Ah, nobody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You faithful in paying your taxes. If you don't pay, ah, uh, ah, uh, oh, oh, God. So, uh, Amen. But when it comes to tap payment, you get God excuse. Anything below 10% is an offering. It's not tar. Oh, my God. Come on, tar. You can't pay. I don't know what they're doing with their money. Yeah, I know. God said pay. Oh. Yeah. How you care what they do? Even though it's good to be accountable, but even if they don't, say pay. You're not doing it to me. You're doing it for what? For God. You can't go take a phone and call. All right. All my taxes I've been paying today. I want to know what you've been doing. Excuse me? Who are you going to ask? What is, even if they want, don't want to, whatever they choose to do with it, then what they do, but you still pay. You're not going to say because you're not seeing what they do with the taxes, I'm, I'm not going to pay taxes because I don't know what the government do with my tax. 
Your body, I want to see what you do with my dad. So because I don't know what you do with the tar, I mean with my taxes, I'm not going to pay. No. Don't worry that. It's a government. God said, Amen. you are stealing from God. What is your 10%? Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. In fact, what blessing? Blessing? Come from where, where you are. I want to see you. What blessing? Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. The Holy Spirit reminded me a few days ago, even though my wife and I can pay our tar, but the Holy Spirit said, before any time I call for tar, I'm going to be the first person with my envelope to shoot or put on to become a leader. I should be the example. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Says uh, my PA, go in my office, pull the drawer, look at my little paper. I got my tie there. Put it in envelope. I don't want nobody to see it. Just put it in envelope and bring it because <laughs> pay in secret. So they can know how much somebody bless me with. <laughs> Some of y'all can calculate when he's at that 50. Like, hey, so I give her. Amen. Mama Grace was in my office. She blessed God. She blessed God. And she blessed me. And she blessed me. And I saw pray for her. She right here. She blessed me. I was like, oh, my God, I was dreaming. Then, then, then I started praying for her. I said, she said, no, Papa, you don't even know. What you have done for us is not compared to anything that we will ever bless you with. You don't have to tell me, thank you. Hallelujah. She said, it's not. Don't tell me. She said, yeah, don't, don't, don't. The sacrifice, who can pay for it? The sacrifice, like, nobody can pay for it. You never think that it's too much to do for your pastor. I have seen people giving dashing pastor house, car dashing pastor. I have seen it with my eyes like this. Joshua Suleiman, Joshua Suleiman went to Minnesota. Do you know how many car Mercedes, Range Rover people were just giving them? I'm, I'm sitting in the meeting and say, God, what wrong with these people? God said, No, no, no. He read or you not read, he could not. The business is they are giving because of God, they will be blessed by. Blessed is the hand that gave them the one that received. He's a great man of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That's somebody you can be judging. Amen, somebody. Amen. So this is what God calls to do, to serve him. When you serve God, it breaks barriers. That's the only reason why God is saying this thing. God is saying me. We quit to forget. You find it? Thank you, mama. God bless you so much. That's my time. My wife can pay time more than me. Oh, God took that thing from over my life. <laughs> Sometimes I forget she don't forget. Father and all she did your time. Father. Then I love she did your time. She made the children to do that. I don't care what people say about that payment. It is real, it is beneficial. God said it. I must do it. I don't care what revelation comes up. It's real. Because the devil have the way of hijacking your prosperity. He got a way to make you confused so you can't talk. And talking before even the new or old testament. Then when God created man, he instituted that tie in the garden of Eden. Eat the nante, but the one in the middle, don't eat. Tie. Somebody shout hallelujah. Release them that they may serve me. Nothing is compared to service. Amen? Amen. Amen. Allow me to rebuke you because I'm your spiritual father. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Rebuke you. I'm serious. Somebody say amen. amen. Do that. Don't steal from this thing because you are securing future. Amen. Amen. And the how he made the covenant with God. He said, God will close my shop. I saw that ball. You know, sometimes the devil can test you. The devil got test. I mean, God can test you. Around 5 o'clock, time to go to church. Bible said they pray meeting. That's the time the customer can come. <laughs> More customer can show up. With a burning heart, he closing the shop. Y'all come tomorrow, please. Can I take your money, Evan? Say no, we'll come back. Some of them will not come. But why? It's a test. So when you tell God, I will be to church this time, there are angels that are waiting because God don't play with your servant. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. He said, I will kill your firstborn. And he did it when he said it. He killed the firstborn. Don't play with seven. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Don't play with seven. He said, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done. God want us not to play. We are our services in Jesus' mighty name. I'm going to preach a message on part two because of time. I want to start, but I want you to understand. The guy named Joel Pade. The guy I'm talking about, Joel Pade. Joel Pade, K-P-E-L-L-E-H. First name, Joel. The testimony I just gave, I want to give you. So some of them might know him, or you might see. I gave true testimony. I seen what happened. God don't play, he don't joke. Somebody shouted. He don't play. Middle your mind to serve God. 
Serving God is one open door. If they obey and serve him, what are you doing? Serve God. Some of you were eight hours. God will not ask him for two or three hours. And not even every day. Just Sunday or Friday. You have all to yourself. Hallelujah. Serve God. Don't let nothing stay in the way. Paul said, what shall separate me? What? 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 He asked the question, what shall separate me? Pastor Kofa, what? What? He said, nothing that I found that can separate me from the Lord of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I don't know what I'm talking to this evening. Amen, somebody. Am I talking to somebody here? Don't let nothing stand before you. The reason why God said it, that you should come. Amen? As I close. There is nothing on my life. Nothing can pay for it. Are you hearing me? Nothing. Amen? Absolutely. They give that on my life. Yeah, Eddie. Eddie being faithful. But there is no amount of money Eddie can bring to me. And they give, can give, it can, it can happen to him. No. Hmm? Mama Grace can bring 10 million that I say, I want prophesy, I want body gift. Let me prophesy. It will not, she will, I will eat the money good. I will repair all my cars and I will go on vacation and I will enjoy. She will not have the gift. The gift can only be transferred by service. That's what happened to Elisha and Elijah. Elisha was so powerful. He was a businessman, but all his money could not pay for the anointing that was on Elijah until he served. Paul said, you cannot budget the gift of God with your money. He said, you and your money perish. It's in the Bible. It's there. Acts chapter 8 verse 20. He said, you and your, they, they saw the gift of God moving. They wanted to pay for the money. And said, you can't pay for it. So what can give you the gift? Service. Somebody say service. 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 And what can give you this gift? I want to bless God for all of you here. Amen. I know we're going to challenge you as a church. God is recovering all, everything. I want to encourage you. You have a true man of God. You have a true full servant of God. And because of you, I'm still standing. Because whenever I see you, it motivates me. That I know God have called me. Stand on your feet. Hallelujah. There is no longer that I live in. But Christ that live in me. There is no longer that I live As your Lord, because you know Him, but you you careless with Him. You are not taking serious. He gave you the precious life that money cannot pay for. There is no amount of money. That's what the Bible says. Who can give anything in a chain of His soul? Amen. Jesus said it. No one. Do you know? 
Satan. Satan told Jesus, if you worship me, I will give you the whole world. And Jesus said, the whole world is not compared to my soul. Many of you, you are getting the whole world. You are losing your soul. All this thing we have is temporary. But life in Christ is internal. When you're talking to a man, make that man to know that my God comes first. I'm not depending on you. I depend on my God. If you can't save God with me, you are not a man for me. Is there anybody here like that? If you can't save God, some of you, when a man says, don't go to church, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't go to that church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hi! You allow your friends to tell you, don't come to church. You say, yes, sir. Can you imagine? He won't. Then when you're losing some things in your life, you don't know why you are you losing those things. You don't know why you're losing them. You don't know what is ahead of you. I come to it. Every day I tell you, you don't know what is ahead of you. Prepare yourself. Let your services in God be the number one ever that no man can take. Jesus said, Mary have chosen a good part, which is the word. She have chosen, Luke chapter 10, verse 41, 42, Jesus said, Mary have chosen a good part. She said, Martha, you are distracted with many life problems. But Martha, have you choose today if you are under the sound of my voice. To the God, I'm telling you because I'm a messenger of God. Listen to me. On the day of judgment day, you will watch video. God will set you down because the Bible says there will be no excuse on that day. You will watch this service that I'm preaching and prophet will be telling you. He said, God will say, do you not hear? I send my messenger to you. Because everything we do is recorded. It's recorded. And the Bible says, and the book of record will open. So there are things that are recorded. If you are here, don't overload the message today. Life is more important. What God wants in a, in, in, in a, in, what God wants you to do for Him is to serve Him. Amen. Don't let service, Amen. don't let service break you down. In Jesus' name, Amen. I want to take this time to actually. You want to give your life to Christ? Oh yeah, that's good. Somebody shouted. He want to because he has to cry thousand times. But I pray that's a bold decision. Amen. To kind of renew. You are touched by the word. Life is, anybody else want to give their life with all shame? You know you've been doing some things two days, three days ago. You're right here. You want to rededicate this life to God? Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. I'm waiting for you. Oh, okay. The pair coming. Amen. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. This is what our God is interested in. Don't take it for granted. When you give your life, you will have more temptation than ever before. But I bless God for the bold step that you have taken. Anybody else want to read that? I know you've been safe. You're S-A-V-E, but you're not S-A-F-E. You say, but you're not safe. You know, when you go buy this, they, they, that safe that they keep money in, they don't spell it S A V E O. S A F E. That means it is protected. So some of you, you S A V E, but you're not S A F E. Because you S A V E and you're doing fee, V V. It's time to redirect your life. I'm not judging you, but I'm telling you. You hear you want to give your life to Christ. Say, I've been playing too much. It's time to be serious with this God. All right. Lift your hand to heaven. Say after me. Say, Lord, I repent from the bottom of my heart. I'm not going to do those things that is not right for me. Forgive me. Restore me. Bless me. And bless me. Today, I rededicate my life to you. My life will never be the same in Jesus' name. I want to bless God for you. You are blessed.
And some of you want to come, but you shame. I know you shame. So do me a favor. Just bend your head down and dedicate your life to God. Amen. <laughs> I know you shame. Let's pray. Everybody, just bend your head down. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I rededicate my life to you. Whatever in me that is none of you, cleanse me, forgive me, save me, and save me for your purpose that I will move more so into the kingdom in Jesus' name. Now, yesterday in our youth meeting, we said, what a good when you save, the benefit of you being saved is for you to save all. What good would it do to you when you get to heaven, you can't see your friends around. So I want you to go and make disciples and bring it to the Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name. Mama Gray, come and say what you want to say. Give Mama Gray one microphone. I don't want you to stay at the 12th or after 12th. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the living Jesus. Amen. I give God the glory, Amen. honor, and adoration. Amen. Listen to her carefully. Uh, go ahead, Mama. I thank you all for the love for the crown you all gave me, Amen. and for the emblem, oh, yeah. and for the honor. Amen. First of all, I'd like to thank our Papa. God bless you. For God the bless love. God. Thank God for me. I thank God for him. Amen. And our mother. Amen. May the Lord continue to strengthen you. May the Lord continue to empower you. And may the Lord increase your anointing. And this ground, May the Lord allow this ground to continue to be our only, only ground. Amen, amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. People of God, I thank the pastors, the, our sister, Diamond. She's not here today. Oh, okay. Uh, all the deaconess, the deacons and deaconesses, the ministers, um, leaders of the ocean, the board, and everybody, Amen. people of God, thank you all. I appreciate you all. Amen. May the Lord continue to bless you. Amen. May the Lord continue to elevate you. Amen. May the Lord continue to increase your anointing, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Sherry, where is Sister Sherry? Sister Sherry is here. Where is Sister Sherry? She's late? All right. Well, what? Amen. Leave it up to the Lord. Put the church cash out up there and the zeal how to give. Amen. Please leave it up to the Lord.